Growing concern from teachers and parents surrounding the safety of students and staff on school campuses. Joining us to share her thoughts on schools reopening is the mother of two from the Pow Poway Unified School District, Melanie Fung. Hey, Melanie, how you doing? Hi, good morning. All right. How so are you? I am well. Thank you for asking. You have, as a parent, one of the toughest decisions you're going to make in 2020, assuming that the governor doesn't shut schools down and take the decision out of district's hands later today. Uh, Poway says they're going to offer a hybrid where kids, if they want to attend, will be able to. You say your kids are going to do what? They are definitely staying home. Um, with my husband being an anesthesiologist on the front lines, we have been experiencing a very challenging few months with him living you know, away from us um, to keep us safe. And unfortunately, with a record number of rising cases and deaths, we have to have the science be the driving factor. Well, Ideally, we all want our kids to go back to school, but we have to do it safely. Melody, the, uh, if you bring up science being the driving factor, there's a lot of science to suggest that kids uh, are not susceptible. In fact, uh, almost a 0% chance of, tr of contracting COVID-19 and even a of, of small chance of transmitting it to adults. You say to that science? Well, not necessarily true because according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, children account for 2% of COVID cases. I mean, however, less risk does not mean no risk, right? COVID-19 has been linked to serious illnesses in children and they may still contribute the transmission and have same viral loads as adults. So then using that measuring stick then come fall during the flu season, say we get past COVID-19 and then we enter the flu season, would you be pulling your kids out of school when they would have even a greater chance of contracting a severe case of the flu? I think that's what's ultimately going to happen anyway. I think the schools are going to you know, have to shut down because we're gonna see a second bigger wave of onset. Um, so why even take that risk right now? I mean, we, don't, we have such rising cases, why even take that risk? I mean, the true infection rate may not be well captured by studies up to date, and we simply do not know what the long lasting side effects will be. Well, Melody, I, uh, if you're asking me why take that risk, because the risk of uh, staying at home, some would argue, uh, the loss in education, the disparity in between kids who have uh, high high speed internet access and kids who high risk kids who are in neighborhoods whose distance learning will not be as effective as say as in your neighborhood the disparity there will increase those would be some of the reasons why you would want your kids to go and get a face to face education you say I absolutely do not dispute that I I completely agree that I am one of the fortunate ones that is able to stay home with my kids and not a, and not everybody has that capability. There are a lot of essential workers that need to go to school and school, I mean, to, to work and school is their only childcare. I completely acknowledge that. But for me in particular, for our family, do I worry about my kids falling behind? No, I don't because we're in a pandemic. I mean, our society has these unrealistic expectations of where, could, where kids should be by the time that they're 18. And right now my focus is to keep them safe and alive. So, but their life is a big risk reward decision in itself. Just getting out of bed has risk. Mm -hmm. Getting into an automobile has risk. The goal of achieving a risk-free environment for kids, is that attainable? No, it's not. But um, when it comes to COVID, there's so many unknowns. I mean, we have seen an adult patient's who have recovered from COVID, who have developed chronic heart disease and permanent lung damage and neurological problems. Do I want to take that risk in putting my kids in that kind of situation? We just don't know what the long lasting side effects are. There's risks in everything, but when it comes to COVID, um, our family's not willing to take it. 
And, 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 and I think that's, you know, it's going to be every family's decision. I, I, you're, no, I'm not going to parent your children. The, only you can do that. And, and I, I support right. your decision to do that fully. But I also, uh, you know, I want to bring up, you bring up the long-term effects, because I hear that a lot when, when I discuss COVID on a pretty regular basis with a lot of parents. And, I mean, the same ris risk re uh, exists for long-term effects for any respiratory illness, be it the flu, be it em emphysema or influenza, all the things that could be associated with, with the respiratory system. And we, we can't wipe out that risk and we still send kids to school pre-COVID-19. What's the difference now with COVID-19? I mean, what a big, uh, what, I guess the difference is the complete unknown for us. I mean, I am not sure that schools are able to, you know, fully 100% prevent kids and teachers from getting sick, especially when Poway Unified doesn't even have a mask law enforcement. Like masks aren't even mandatory when that's the guidelines per the CDC. How do you expect, you know, to, for us to send our kids to school when masks aren't even mandatory? We're, we're, we have seen a spike in cases getting infected, of, of children getting infected in Texas and Arizona and uh, Florida. Um, we're just gonna see that happening here if we send our kids back to school. I mean, do we wanna overwhelm the hospitals? Do we wanna overwhelm the ICUs? I mean, I personally don't. All right, uh, we're up against the top of the outer. We sure appreciate you taking time to speak with KUSI. Uh, we, we respect your point of view, and uh, we will continue the debate. Perhaps even you and I will talk again in the not-so-distant future. And we wish your husband and your children and yourself and everybody in your community well. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You bet.